All right, welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. And as promised, the last video, we looked at how to manually loop on collections. We wrote a bunch of four loops. So we went four item in the collection and we looped on the item manually. Swift also has a bunch of convenience methods for us so that we don't actually have to write that manual loop if we are doing certain things. And so three of the most common things that we do when we're writing those loops is filtering, sorting, and mapping. So filtering is if you take my original array and I want to filter it for every item in the array with some specific subset of data. That's a filter. Sorting is just what it sounds like. If we want to take all the items in an array and then put them in a certain order, that's sorting. And then mapping means we're going to map or transform a data type from one type to another. So for example, if I have an array of some struct here and I want to convert it to an array of string, I can map it from one type to another. In this video, we're going to look at the methods for all three of those, which I think are incredibly powerful when you start actually building apps. The next playlist I recommend after this is the Swift UI Bootcamp. In that playlist, we're going to learn the basics of how to build screens. And it's going to take us a while before we actually start writing a ton of data on the screens. And so I don't know if you're going to use these methods every day starting today, but I think it's good to at least have them in your toolbox. And so let's jump into the code here. Let's filter, let's sort, let's map. And then I think we're coming pretty close to wrapping up this playlist. All right, welcome back everyone. We are almost done with this playlist. Do not worry. This video I actually wasn't even going to include in this playlist, but I think it's worth just touching on briefly. We're going to just go over it, but we're not going to do a deep dive because honestly, you're not going to need this for the next like 50 videos on my channel. And I have videos where I actually dive deeper into this, but they're what I consider more of an intermediate level video. So this, we're just going to try to do a very first basic beginner level look at how we can filter, sort, and map data. And so let's right click the navigator, create a new playground page, and let's just call this filter sort. And I'm just covering this because it's probably pretty common in a lot of applications, and I just wanna get it into your tool set. We're probably not gonna use this for a while. If you start following the SwiftUI bootcamp after this, that playlist is much easier, I would say, than this one. It's also much more fun because we are building the UI. But in that playlist, we are not going to use these methods for almost the entire playlist because we don't really need to use these until we actually start building full applications. But anyway, because we're looking at arrays and dictionaries and for loops, it just makes sense to touch on this a little bit right now. Let's create a struct and let's call this maybe a database user. Maybe in our app, we have database users. Every user has a name of type string. Every user has an is premium of type bool. And maybe every database user has like an order. So the order we want to show them on the screen. So we'll say let order of type integer. All right, let's create a array of all users. It equal That is of type an array of database user. And let's set it equal to an array of database user. All right, I'm going to add in Nick. Of course, I am premium. Order number, I'll put myself fourth. All right, let's copy and paste this a couple times and let's add in a couple other users. So maybe we have Emily, who is definitely not premium. Order, we'll put her first. Another one, we could do Samantha, is premium. I guess we'll give her premium. Order three, let's do Joe and let's do Chris. Joe, premium, sure. Chris, definitely not. Order, let's put Joe last, maybe 1,000 or 10,000. And then Chris will put at maybe two. All right, so we have this array of users. And now we want to actually manipulate the data. So how do we do this? Firstly, let's look at filtering. So I'm going to start with what we did in the last video. We're going to say for user in all users. And let's create another array called, let's say users, let's say all premium users. This will be an array of database user. 
set it equal to a blank array. And then as we loop through these users, let's say if user dot is premium, we're going to call all premium users and append the user to that array. And so when we get down here, we will print out all premium users. And as expected, only the premium users are going to actually print out. So we have Nick, we have Samantha, we have Joe, right? Joe is premium, Samantha is premium, and Nick is premium. Perfect. Now there are times where we're gonna to have to manually do this loop ourselves, but there are also times where there are functions that do this for us. So I'm going to comment this out. And I'm gonna instead set all premium users equal to all users. So the original array dot filter. And I can literally just filter on the array automatically. So instead of having to loop on it, I'm gonna create a filter. Now behind the scenes, this filter is actually looping through all of the users. So it's actually doing the same thing that we could manually do. This is just a convenience thing. So I'm gonna click enter here. And this is going to then loop on all of the users inside that loop. So if I click enter on this, in the same way we have four user in all users, this user that we are looping on is now this user here. So this is in the loop. So this closure is the same thing as this closure. So this user is this user, this closure is this closure. And so in here we can say if user dot is premium return true and then else return false. So if the user is premium, include them after in the filter. If not, do not include them. So I will comment this out. We will run this. And now what do you know? All premium users is equal to all of the premium users. So same exact output but we didn't actually have to loop on it ourselves. Now, because user.isPremium is a Boolean, and so if this Boolean is true, we return true. If this Boolean is false, we return false. We can actually just rewrite this. So I'm just gonna copy and write it again down here. We can say return user.isPremium. So we were returning the value itself because if is premium is true, we're going to return true. If is premium is false, we'll return false. And that's the same thing as just returning the value itself. All right. Now in Swift, again, if we are just returning one thing of the function, we don't need to include the return keyword here. So I can also just put this like this. Now, before we move forward, I want to just show you guys a shorthand way of actually writing this code. So we're going to create another one called var all premium users to, of course, it's an array of database user. I'll set it equal to all users dot filter, but instead of clicking enter on this, I'm going to open the brackets, put a space in here. And now as we are looping through all of these users, we need a way to reference the user. So right in here, we open this closure and then we have each user and we can use the data on that user. But if we are making this a one line thing, we don't have this extra user in piece of code. Instead, to reference the user that we are looping on, we use the dollar sign and a zero. This meaning the item that we are looping on. So we'll loop on the item and we'll say if the user dot is premium. It's a little confusing, but this is doing the exact same thing as this. This is just a shorthand. Now in most of my beginner tutorials, I'm gonna write it out like this so that it is not confusing. But I want you guys to know that if you see something like this, it's the same thing as this. It's just, this is a shorthand way instead of actually writing this user in and having it go to multiple lines. All right, we learned how to filter. We're gonna do sort, we're gonna do map, and then we're gonna wrap up this video. So in the same way that we have this array and we are filtering on it, let's go down here and let's do a sort. And we're gonna say var ordered users of type array of database user. And I'll set it equal to, let's do all users dot sorted by. And now again, what are we gonna sort on? If I look at my users, every user has an order. 
maybe I want to sort the users in the order that they are. So order number one comes first, order one 10,000 goes last. All right, so in here, I'm gonna click enter. And just like in the filter where we had the user in, now we have this closure with some data in. The difference here is that there's two pieces of data versus one piece of data. And that's because when we are doing sorting, we need to then, we need to now tell it, we need to tell it how to prioritize or sort one item over the other. So if we look at this array, what's really gonna happen is we're gonna loop on all of the items. And as we do the loop, it's going to compare this item to this item. Then it's going to compare this item to this item. Then it's gonna compare this item to this item, and then this item to this item. And then it's gonna continue doing that until all of the items are in the correct order. So when we get into this closure down here and it's asking for two items, it's saying, if we are comparing this one versus this one, how do we pick which one comes first? And again, if we're comparing this one to this one, how do we know which one to put first? So when we loop on this, we'll call this user one and we'll call this user two. So user one is not necessarily the first user, but it's when we are comparing two users, it's the first and the second that we are comparing. So if we're comparing Samantha to Joe, this will be user one and this will be user two. And of course we wanna prioritize them by order. So whichever has the lowest order should come first. So in here, we're gonna return where user one dot order is less than user two dot order. And come down here, I will print out ordered users. Let's comment this one out. Let's run it. And we can see now that in order, we have Emily order one, we have Chris order two, we have Samantha order three, Nick order four, and then Joe order 10,000. So it's in the exact order we want. If we wanted to do the opposite, we could do greater than. Now they're gonna be in the reversed order, but let's put it back to less than. Before we move on, I'm also gonna do this shorthand just so you guys get a little more comfortable with it, but it's a little more difficult because now we have two items that we have here. So before we only had one item and we used the dollar sign zero, but now we have two items. So again, let's say var ordered users to array of database user equals all users dot sorted. And here I'm gonna open up the brackets again. And now to reference this first user, we're gonna use money sign zero. And we're gonna say money sign zero dot order is less than, and now to reference the second user, we're gonna use money sign one, money sign one dot order. So this code is the exact same as this code. This is just a short way to do it. Again, if you remember back way back when, when we were looking at the tuples video, I showed you guys that when we created a tuple, if we didn't give it a, an explicit name, the first item in the tuple was referenced by zero. And then the second item was referenced by one. These are the exact same things coming back now. So when we're looping on here, the first item is zero and the second one is one. First item is zero, second one is one. Cool. So now we learned how to filter, we learned how to sort. Let's wrap up this video with learning how to map. All right, let's come up here and we're gonna say, so we have this array of database users, but maybe in our app, for whatever reason, we just wanted a list of user names. So we don't want the entire database user, we just want to get their names from the array of database users. So really we wanna convert this array from an array of a database user to an array of string. And so when we transform something from one type to another type, we call that mapping. We are mapping the data from a database user to a string. So let's come down here and we're gonna say var, let's call this user names of type array of string. I'm gonna set it equal to all users, which is again, an array of database user, and we will dot map. And I'm gonna click enter in here. And again, we are looping on each user. And when we map, we need to transform it into some type. 
So we need to return out of here the type that we want it to become. And so each user has obviously a username. So we will return the user dot name. So here we are transforming the array of database user to an array of string. If I come down here and I print out usernames, we'll see that only the strings print out here. We don't have all of that other baggage. We don't have the full database user. It's just an array of strings. The shorthand way of doing this var usernames to just an array of string equals all users dot map money sign zero dot name. Again, this is the same as this. This is just a shorthand way of doing it. All right, that is it for this video. I just wanted to quickly touch on filtering, sorting, and mapping because they're incredibly powerful. If you go to start building your own apps, you're going to need to know how to do this. And you probably should not be like manually doing these loops if you don't have to. So this is enough of an intro. I think it's enough to get you started, but you probably will not need this for at least a while especially if you're going to join the Swift UI bootcamp in the next playlist. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.